Good morning. I'm Jerry Sagona, Vice President of Business Development with the Rockford Area Economic Development Council. Today we present a webinar on video conferencing best practices with IMEC, the uh, Illinois Manufacturing Excellence Center. The Rockford Area Economic Development Council is hosting these webinars as a service to our community to provide meaningful information to help businesses reopen and prosper during this pandemic. Please visit our website at www.rockfordil.com for other business resources. There will be one more webinar scheduled during the month of August. On August 20th, the ED Talk series continues with Rockford University on strategic alignment and performance, identifying common reasons as to why organizations fail to achieve their desired results and why employees fail to achieve performance metrics. Again, please visit our website for the dates and registration details. Before we begin, I'd like to give special recognition to today's webinar coordinator, Anna Garrison. Uh, she is manager of projects and events with the Rocket Area Economic Development Council. I mentioned Anna's because it's there is a tremendous amount of work that goes on behind the scenes to uh, coordinate a webinar, and we deeply appreciate her efforts. Thanks, Anna. Anna. So let's get the ball rolling. Uh, today's webinar is scheduled for approximately one hour with the last 15 to 20 minutes reserved for uh, questions and answers. Please feel welcome to submit questions throughout the presentation through the question chat function feature on your screen. This morning, I would like to welcome Mary Halleck. Mary provides direct technical assistance to manufacturers to improve their business and leadership strategies. With more than 22 years of experience in the chemical and food ingredients industries, she can assist manufacturers in the areas of production, strategic planning, business management, workforce development, continuous improvement, and green business practices. Mary is a certified job instructions and job relations trainer and coach with credentials from TWI, OSHA, and Development Dimensions International. I'll now turn over the presentation to Mary. Thank you. I'm glad to be here and I appreciate Radek inviting me to do this. Have I, here we go. I'm looking to share my screen. So today I'm gonna to talk about virtual meetings, something that we've probably all been doing a lot of recently. Some of you may have done some ahead of the pandemic, but this has taken on a new meaning in all of our lives, having these virtual meetings, holding meetings where we're via phone or via video, uh, like we've never done before. So you would think holding a virtual meeting wouldn't be too far from an in-person meeting. However, we now have cameras, good meeting platforms, all of that sort of technology that maybe we haven't used before. As I'm, as I'm sure you've all experienced lately, it for some reason doesn't seem to be the same as an in-person meeting. So my purpose today is really not to help you pick the best meeting platform, but rather I want to help you manage whatever platform you're using for these meetings. And there are so many out there so that you're using it the most effectively and that you're getting the best use out of the people's time that you have on your meeting. I'd like to start kind of reviewing what we'll be doing as, as in the introduction uh, from Nathan, he recommended that you use chat if you have questions. So in your control panel, you should see a little box that has chat with a little arrow next to it. So you can pull that arrow down and then you'll see the ability to chat. So please feel free to enter questions, comments. Maybe you've identified your own best practices that I don't even mention here. And so we can share it with the others who are on the call today. We will do a little bit of polling. You'll see that launched and then you'll be able to uh, just click on whichever selection you want in the polling. So those are the, those are the controls we'll be using. You all are on mute right now, and um, I'll just move through the rest of the webinar. But certainly, if you have any questions, enter them in the chat. So here's remote meeting bingo. I bet if you look at some of the squares there, it'll remind you of some of the meetings that you've participated in. So we often have technology issues, screens not loading, some people have internet challenges, so we get video dropped. Maybe the video gets kind of quirky, a little bit off to, to, to see the video. It, it can be really challenging. And so 
Um, I've got one of these bingo cards in my office and sometimes I use it during a meeting. It's, it can be quite amusing. Uh, you would think after all the video meetings that we've done that people would understand the controls, they'd, they'd have those good practices and, and the awareness of what's going on. But even as recent as last week, I know I attended a meeting uh, where someone was obviously eating lunch and the person who was uh, doing the facilitating didn't familiarize themselves with the controls. So they were unable to mute the person and for whatever reason, the person didn't recognize that they were being disruptive. So you would think at this point, we've, we've got it all down, but we don't. So I wanna make it harder, I wanna make it harder you to make it harder for the people to mark off these squares in the future. I want you to be better at running your meetings. So I'm going to talk a little bit about communication. Then I'm going to review some of the challenges we have in virtual meetings and why they're different from uh, in-person meetings. And I'll end with a number of recommendations you can use to make your next virtual meeting go more smoothly. So I'm going to ask Anna to launch a poll. And I'd like you to guess roughly how much communication is body language. So I'll give you a minute or so to answer that poll. How are we doing, Anna? Has just about everybody answered? Um, not quite yet. Okay. So if we have the majority, I think we can go ahead and close the poll. Just see what people have, how much we think is So it looks like we've got about 20% of you say it's 92% body language, 33% say it's 55%, zero say 7%, and 47 say 84%. So quite a wide range of, of ideas. So nobody thinks it's a little bit. Most of you think it's quite a bit um, is is body language. So let's see what what studies have found. Studies have found that about 55% of communication is body language. So when we're communicating in meetings, in small groups, in person, much of our language is body language. So online, it's kind of a challenge. Think about Think about body language, it seems like a lot, but think about looking across a store or across a street where you're watching people converse with one another. Have you ever kind of tried to make up stories? It can be kind of a fun game. You're watching their body language and you can make up stories about what they're saying. I bet you'd be pretty close. You know, were they laughing? Were they serious? Were they arguing? Sometimes you can come pretty close to what they're talking about just based on watching people talk. So without even hearing them. So think about how this may impede you when you're doing a video conference or a video meeting. Now let's talk about tone of voice. So let's put another poll out there, Anna, and let's see what people think in terms of tone of voice. How are we doing? I think we're good, I'll close the poll. Okay, thanks. So 0% of you thought it was 
25% thought it was 27%, 75% of you thought it was 38%, and 0% of you thought it was 14%. So the majority of you got it right, 38% of communication is tone of voice. So the words we say matter, but the way we say the words sometimes matter even more. So you can say the same words in a sarcastic voice, a nice voice, a mean voice. Even though you use the same words, you're going to convey three different meanings and get three different reactions. So how would you feel about me saying, gee, I sure am glad you guys are all joining me today, versus I am really glad that I've got you here with me today and that you're joining me with this webinar. Gives you a much different sense of kind of my feelings about things. And so I actually find that in virtual meetings, I really try very hard to use my voice more than what I would in an in-person meeting because I recognize that tone of voice is so very important. So considering that body language and communication with tone of voice make up so much of our communication, we've got some real challenges when we're doing virtual meetings. So first of all, it's hard to read the body language. When we're looking at people through a video camera, generally we're only seeing them from about the shoulders up. So you're not seeing my whole body and, and there are other parts of my body that might be conveying information. I might be crossing my arms, I might be tapping my feet or tapping my fingers, which you wouldn't even see and recognize that's being impatient. So the other problem with the squares is the more people we have on these video conferences, the smaller the squares become. So it's harder to see their eyes clearly. It's hard to see what their, their facial express, expressions are clearly. So we really have a challenge picking up on that body language and getting that feedback that we need. I do a lot of training now virtually and it is a much different experience for me than when I'm in person, because in person, I'm much better able to read the room and figure out where maybe I'm losing people or people are getting um, tired of, of the content and we need to move on. It's very hard for me to pick those things up on a virtual meeting. So, so we've got to really work hard to manage these meetings um, very intentionally. Another challenge we'll face are technical issues. I'm sure all of you have had these. Like I said at the beginning, a lot of people have internet challenges. So we may have uh, screens freezing, people may get dropped from the call. Maybe we haven't become familiar enough with our platform and we forget how to use some of the controls. So our, our virtual meetings may be interrupted by some of these technical glitches. When we're in person and have a technical issue, everyone in the room kind of knows what's going on. And so it's a little bit easier to manage these technical issues. Often it's easier for people to jump in and help you. So maybe a coworker understands the problem you're having with the projector or your computer and they can help you out. When, when you're virtual, however, it's a little bit harder for a coworker to often jump in and help you out. When someone gets dropped from the meeting, they're kind of blind to what's going on on the other side. So is, is someone trying to get me back in? Am I trying to get back in? Then we start picking up our phones and communicating by phones. So it becomes much more challenging. So, so managing this technology is so important and just getting it down as best we can is, is very critical to having a good meeting. I know uh, Radek was very sensitive to this and invited me to do a practice session with them earlier this week, which I really appreciate. I think that's important because um, of all the multiple platforms, I need to understand the best way to work with the platform that they're using. It's also easy to hide in these virtual meetings, isn't it? I can turn off my camera and go do something on, on my phone or maybe on another um, computer or maybe minimize my screen for the meeting and start doing some email. So it's very easy to hide. Um, I might choose to be on mute, which can be a very good thing actually, so we don't get interruptions from, from side noises, 
but that may um, allow me to go do some other things and kind of get away with it. So we need to be very careful about not allowing people to disengage from the conversation and the rest of the group. Um, it's it's very easy to kind of check in at the beginning, but then not participate. So that's harder to do when you're in the same room. So these video conferences, these video meetings, allow us to be a little bit less diligent about participate, participating. And it's not that people are necessarily being bad. It's just that they think, I can multitask. I can pay attention to multiple things. But really, our minds don't allow us to do that. You will lose track of what's going on in the meeting. And if you've invited them to the meeting, it must be important that they're attending. There must be some reason that you wanted them. They must be necessary to your objective. So we want them present. We don't want them hiding. Kind of going along with the hiding is holding the interest. So it's hard to hold people's interest. It's way too easy for me to pick up Google and start checking on things or maybe checking my email or checking my texts on my phone. So one, one of the things that I know I do is I, I turn all my email off and my phone off so that it kind of forces me to pay attention. Um, so it, it makes me do that. So it can be hard to hold interest. It's hard to hold people's interest on a video call versus in person because we're losing some of those connections. Interruptions. Interruptions can be another problem. Usually during an in-person meeting, it's much easier to tell when someone wants to talk by their body language, a little bit harder on a virtual meeting. So if, if it's a, a meeting where we're trying to engage in conversation, Often there's a lot of talking over one another. So we have to may have to manage it a little bit differently, which can be kind of uncomfortable, but um, it may be necessary in order to avoid some of those interruptions. Delays in, in the internet connection can also cause some of those disruptions as well. I've, I've been with some clients that again, their inter internet is not as robust as others. And so, I really have to be very careful to sit, let them talk, make sure there's a moment of silence before I talk, which is really tough because we're generally not used to that much silence in between in the conversation. So it, it takes a lot of concentration. Running virtual meetings takes a lot more con concentration in many ways than just running an in-person meeting. There can also be misunderstandings. And this really ties into all the other challenges that I've, I've discussed. We, we can't read the body language as well. Sometimes our tone of voice does not come across as well. Um, people may be more distracted than they are in, in a virtual meeting. So all of these things together may mean that we don't understand what's taking place or we misunderstand a statement or I thought you were going to do the action item when in fact you thought I was going to do it. So, so we need to be very clear about our virtual meetings and the way we manage them. So given all these challenges, what are some strategies we can use to make sure that we're managing the meetings the best we possibly can? The first thing we want to do is prepare well. We should always prepare for any meeting. However, a virtual meeting may require a different kind of preparation. So let's walk through some things to think about doing differently. Sometimes we schedule meetings and we don't clarify who will put together the agenda and we kind of come into a meeting and we kind of know what we're talking about, but we don't have a clear agenda. We also may not have specified who's going to lead the meeting, which may be less important in, a, in an in-person meeting than it is for a virtual meeting. I would say in a virtual meeting, it's very important that we identify who's going to lead the meeting. We need someone to kind of be a conductor. If it hasn't been clear before, then make it clear now. This does not mean that the leader has to do everything. They can certainly delegate. However, this one person does have to make sure the meeting is well planned and well facilitated and it isn't left to chance. 
because this leaving things to chance is where it gives more of a chance for people to disengage, creates misunderstandings, and creates some confusion. In a virtual meeting, you have to remember to plan the agenda as well as plan out the use of technology. So if you're using technology of some sort, what platform will you use? How do you send out invites? How do you make sure everybody has the technology? So it's not just your use of the technology, but is everybody else able to use the technology? Do they have the connections they need? Do they have the resources they need? Do they understand it? So now instead of setting up a physical meeting room, you're really setting up a virtual meeting room. And that's the way you have to think about it. It shouldn't be ad hoc. It should be intentional with the way you set up your virtual meeting room. Make sure you have a clear agenda. I'm sure most of you do this for most meetings. However, I want to re-emphasize for virtual meetings, it's even more important. It can be so easy to get off topic and get distracted. You may want to go just beyond listing topics and maybe add a lead person to each topic. So each topic is well prepared in advance. Maybe set objectives for each topic. Another reason for assigning a different person to each topic is this is a way to engage everybody. So I'm not just sitting back and listening to the, the leader of the meeting, give all the information, do all the talking, set all the actions. Have you ever been in meetings like that? That's where you start to disengage. Well, so-and-so is taking it all. I don't need to engage here. So the more you can hand out responsibility across the agenda, the better able you will be to engage each person in the meeting. Because now all of a sudden, if I have an agenda topic, I've got to prepare the discussion. I may have to prepare some information that I want to share during the meeting. I have to make sure I can share it well, and make sure I'm prepared, make sure I get the outcomes that we need to get out of it. So think about how we can use the agenda to, to add responsibility across each person in the meeting, make sure everybody's ready to participate. It's a good idea to um, open the meeting early. This way you can be ready to get started on time. You can work through any technology bugs that might come up. This is especially helpful if you're inviting people from outside your organization. So this may give you a chance to get them kind of set up with the technology, make sure they understand how to share slides, maybe make sure they understand how to enter chat or make sure the screens look correct to them and they understand how to share video, audio, all of those little technical details that maybe they're not familiar with your platform. So make sure you open it up a little bit early if you open it up early and everything's smooth, you can always turn your camera and your, your audio off and go get a drink of water or take a few little last minute notes, get prepared, just kind of settle yourself down, whatever it is, it never hurts to be prepared to start a little bit early and make sure everything's running right. Because Murphy's Law will never fail is if you start right on time, something is going to go wrong and then you're 10 minutes into the meeting before you actually get started. You can invite participants to join early. As I said in the previous slide, it's nice to have people join early, especially if they're outside of the organization so that they can get familiar with your platform. There are so many platforms, we wanna make sure that people are comfortable with it and they're not fiddling around with things, rather they're paying attention to the content. So invite participants to join early. Again, we can put everybody on mute, we can turn off camera until we're ready to start. But boy, isn't it nice to just start on time, have everything go smoothly. Every, everybody is so much calmer that way and, and ready to jump in and participate. As I recommended earlier, it's good to assign roles in topics. You may not, you may also want to assign some roles in the meeting itself. They're a little bit different than you might do in a regular in-person meeting. So you might not normally assign someone to be a timekeeper in a in a face-to-face -face meeting. However, in a virtual meeting, this can be very helpful. We can easily lose track of time and get off on tangents. So 
I know in many of my meetings internally here, we actually set time limits on certain topics. And if we start to get off track, the, the timekeeper actually kind of calls a timeout and says, okay, we're, we're discussing this. Should we go offline to finish this discussion and then move on to the next action item? We want to respect the fact that people have other meetings set up on their agendas, yet we want to be able to cover the topics. Certainly a note taker is a good thing to have. You may even want to take notes on a virtual whiteboard, which can be some tools that are available to you in some of these web platforms. So take advantage of them, just like you take, a, take notes on a whiteboard in a meeting room. It can be helpful to take notes on a virtual whiteboard because that keeps you on track, helps with those misunderstandings too. So we avoid some of those misunderstandings. If I write something up, that I thought I heard someone say, and they say, Mary, you didn't quite get that right. They can see it right then and make that correction um, rather than having that confusion go on. So, so make sure that you assign some roles and manage this meeting a little bit more deliberately. 45 minutes is my recommendation in terms of time limits to a meeting, 45 minutes, no more than an hour. I do some virtual training that's that's over an hour. It's just on Tuesday, I did a three hour virtual training session. I did not go a solid three hours. In fact, roughly every 45 to 55 minutes, I would stop and take a 10 minute break. So you're gonna have to work that into your agenda. Sitting for three hours at a computer, paying attention even for 45 to 55 minutes at, an, at a computer is much more challenging than an in-person meeting because again, we're missing out, especially on that body language and there's less interaction. It's more difficult. So you can hold longer meetings, but I strongly recommend every 45 to 55 minutes, take a break, make people stand up, make people stretch have them go get a drink of water. It's very important that we get up from our chairs and not just use that 10 minutes to start answering email. We really need a break for our minds and for our bodies as well. So manage that. Now let's talk a little bit more about managing technology in the meetings. Again, I'm not gonna talk about particular platforms, but so many of these platforms have the same features. It's just a different way of ac accessing them. So explore your platforms. If you haven't yet found some of these features, think about, think about exploring them a little bit more. A lot of them have them and you may not even realize that they're there. They may be kind of hidden, maybe talk to your IT person, get some help with that. Um, sometimes the host has more controls than the participants, so it's a good idea to review the difference between host controls and participant con controls. I know I use Zoom a lot, and the Zoom host controls are much different than the Zoom participant controls, so when I introduce a meeting, I introduce the participant controls, not my controls, because I want everybody to be familiar with what they have. So the mute button, big one. We need to be able to set some expectations around muting sound and muting video as well. Um, as a host, you often have the ability to mute participants, but it's good to call it out to everybody, right? Let's all go on mute except when we're talking to avoid some of those background noises. We're, we're all in, often in unusual situations. We're in perhaps offices that we're not used to using, maybe home offices, maybe even work offices where the access is different. So noises become distracting. So like I said, we think everybody recognizes this these days, but I still get on these, um, these videos where people do not mute themselves. So if you're the host, recognize that you may have those controls and the abil ability to do that, but do allow people to talk but th because their ability to talk again allows them to engage. So we just might wanna discuss, take the first two or three minutes with a new group and just discuss how are we gonna manage the muting the video, muting the audio. Sharing screens. Learn how to do this. It's often handy to share screens in meetings. 
This can be challenging when you have multiple applications open and are using dual screens. I know it's taken me a little bit to get familiar with that as I got up to speed on, on some of the training. So dual screens can be very beneficial, but you need to make sure you're sharing the right screen. Um, make sure you don't have stuff up in your background that maybe you're sharing some proprietary information where you don't want to share it. So just, just get familiar with the technology. Use coworkers to practice. Great opportunity to get to know your coworkers some. You can both benefit from learning how to do this. This screen sharing is, is a tremendous benefit. I, we do it all the time when we're in meetings. It's here, let me pull this up so you can see it and we can work off, a, off of it together. Can really help you get a lot of work done in a meeting. Um, streaming video with sound. So some platforms do a good job of this, other platforms not so much. So if you want to share a video, you need to understand how to do that. You need to make sure it comes through the other person's computer, not just on your computer. So there, there are different, unfortunately, each platform has different buttons and different access and, and ways to do this. Sometimes you have to download videos. Sometimes you can just share it right through a, a PowerPoint or other uh, source. So get to know your platform because if you don't understand this, what'll happen is you'll show a video, it'll come across great for you. You can hear it, but the, nobody else can hear it and it's jumpy on their end. So it's, it's not valuable to them. So make sure you can, if you wanna do this and make sure it comes through to other people's computers. So it, it makes some sense. Manage the chat. Again, this is a great feature to have. Um, what, what we're doing today is I've, I've got Anna helping me manage that chat. Sometimes when I'm in, in smaller meetings, I may manage it on my own. In bigger meetings where I have more than about 10 to 12 people, it's hard for me to manage chat and manage the rest of the meeting. So I'll often ask someone to help me do that. It's a really handy feature to allow people to have conversation, ask questions, um, all of that without interrupting the meeting. And, and sometimes I'll even have a facilitator that we work closely together. So they'll actually interrupt my meeting. We've, we've worked uh, enough together so they know how to interrupt me in a very polite way. And they'll say, hey, Mary, I've got a great question that relates to the slide. Can you answer this right now rather than waiting until the end? So think about how you want to manage the chat, where you're comfortable managing it, where you might want to have a coworker do it. Again, this is a great role to assign to someone in a virtual meeting to keep them engaged in the meeting because they're kind of forced to, to watch that chat for you and, and help you um, assess when to interrupt with questions, when to just kind of keep things. I, I love to use chat in these kinds of sessions for people to just share their best practices. I, I, you know, I use this a lot. I have a lot of good practices, but I don't think I'm the only one who knows some really good ideas and has done some novel things with their platform. So again, all of those, those of you out there that have used any kind of platforms and done something creative, please share in the chat. And then we'll be sure to either share at the end of the meeting, or I'm sure Anna or Nathan can share it afterwards, even with everybody. So you can all learn from one another. It's a great opportunity to do that. You may want to record your meeting, depending on whether you want to keep that for notes or not. Please just be sure you let people know that you're recording. It's, it's just a polite thing to do to make sure that they know that you're doing that. There are some other features that platforms have that you may want to consider using. If your platform has breakout rooms, this is a great chance to allow smaller groups to participate with one another. Uh, just like doing a breakout room in a big meeting. They can be a lot of fun. You can get a lot more accomplished. You can have people come back and report out. It can be really effective with big groups to get into smaller discussions and, and share more. So, so see if you have that feature. Like I said, there may be a virtual whiteboard available. It works just like a, an in-person whiteboard. Um, you can do drawings, you can put text on it. I use that very frequently to take notes in front of the group. They don't have to watch me. They can watch a whiteboard and watch the notes instead. 
polling. You've seen us use that on this on this webinar. I like to use polling. It's kind of engaging. It's kind of fun. Gets people thinking about the content. And some platforms have annotate tools or tools where their participants can actually make notes on slides. So I've had some webinars where I actually give people the tools to draw things and I'll put up a slide and just let them draw things or make, make marks on the slides, engages the people in the meeting, as well as allows me to see what people are thinking um, instead of going to chat, it's just another way. It can be kind of fun and colorful and, you know, we can kind of play around a little bit. There's nothing wrong with playing a little bit in these meetings. So we want to manage these interactions very carefully, make sure we don't have unusual interruptions. So I'm going to go through some ideas I have for managing interactions. Some of them I've said already, but just want to emphasize them. So again, silence your participants. If you need to make sure you keep background noises from interrupting the meeting. You may have some casual meetings where you don't care about that. I've had some casual um, intercompany meetings where you know it's kind of fun to have some of those noises and we laugh about it. But if you're having a meeting where you've got customers on or, or people that you wanna have a very serious meeting, Let's manage those mute buttons appropriately. The other thing we wanna pay attention to is note taking. Make sure you take notes during these meetings. Even if you're not taking them on a whiteboard, you're having someone take notes that you send out um, later, that's, that's still a good thing to do because if someone has a misunderstanding or we don't understand an action or we've left something off, this is just a great reminder to uh, here's what we said we we're going to do. Is this really is this really what we all agreed to? So pay attention to that. Um, pay attention to home office distractions. Unfortunately, not everybody can be in an office. So some people may have childcare issues. Some people may have issues with um, noises in the background that they just can't avoid. So so work with people ahead of time and figure out ways that you're going to manage those distractions. Maybe there's somebody who's really having an issue they've got to deal with. You want them to participate as much as possible and you kind of give them permission to look if you know if you need to excuse yourself for a minute to take care of a child or whatever, put yourself on mute for video and audio and just enter a little chat and tell me you've left the meeting. So I know that you're not there. So pay attention to that these days. Unfortunately, that's the reality we're dealing with. It helps to restate things. If we if we think we've agreed to an action, it doesn't hurt to restate it at the end. Let's go over our actions one more time. Let's make sure this is what we all agreed to. Here's who's going to do it. Here's the time it's going to be done. Restating is important because we've got this challenges in communication. Rambling can be a challenge. So you, as a facilitator, you've got to manage that. You've got to make sure that um, you kind of control the meeting, that that timekeeper can help keep that on track. Okay, let's have a time out here. Let's make sure we stay on track. Uh, we also want to make sure that we use whatever technology. I didn't bring this up, but some platforms have raising hands. That can be another good way to manage people muting and unmuting themselves. So, so maybe they raise their hands physically in their camera, but some platforms actually kind of have a raise hand feature. So it's a little hand that pops up. And now I know that Sally wants to participate in the meeting. So I'm gonna stop talking and I'm gonna say, so Sally, what are your questions? The last thing I wanna mention is um, a good way to facilitate is in round robin discussions. So one of those, one of those challenges we talked about up front was the fact that people may get distracted or they may um, kind of lose interest or, or get sidetracked. So one of the ways to manage this is to say, okay, we're going to discuss this topic right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go around to everybody and have everybody tell me about their suggestions for the changes we've been discussing. And I'll just call on people one-on-one. -on -one. I've given them a heads up 
that I'm going to do this. So I'm not calling on them just kind of arbitrarily. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go around the room and now they're kind of on notice. Whoops, I better pay attention. I better be ready to enter this discussion because she's gonna call on me sometime. So this is a good way again, to kind of give, get people to get their heads back into the meeting. If you're worried that people have, have lost interest and get them to participate in the topic very intentionally. So, so think about how you might use this to add value to your meetings. A few odds and ends before I wrap up. Smile, use a happy voice, use an upbeat tone. Um, you might wanna include rapport to uh, just enter the meeting, maybe just ask how everybody's days going. Much more important in our virtual meetings than in our in-person meetings, because often in person meetings, we kind of enter the room a few minutes early. We, we kind of do some of that rapport building. We often forget about that in our virtual meetings because we get started on our meeting and then we go right to topic. So, um, so think about how you might just leave a couple of minutes for that. You might want to ask everyone to share video, creates a little bit more connection if people are comfortable with that, have some high energy. Um, I try my best to, to really amp it up on webinars and video meetings because if I just kind of talk in a monotone, nobody's going to pay attention to me. If I just kind of whisper, it's hard for you to hear me. So I try to really amp it up a little bit more than usual. And again, Smile when you talk, not constantly, but it's nice to introduce a smile every night, every now and then. Um, it just kind of engages people a little bit more. This is the hardest one. I have a hard time with this. You should really look at your camera and not at the screen. It's a little bit easier when I'm sharing just slides because I'm not looking at people. But when I've got people in front of me, I do tend to kind of look at the screen more than my camera because I wanna try and see as much of their body language as I can. This is a real hard thing to do. Somebody suggested to me, and I've not yet taken up this suggestion, but I'll pass it along to you, is put a couple of eyes up by your, your camera, and maybe you'll look more at those eyes than down at your, at your screen. This is one that I've gotta work on, one of my um, things that I've gotta improve on. Standing can give you more energy. So there will be times when I'll do this, instead of sitting at my desk, I might stand at a better platform if you have one to do that. It just helps you as the speaker and moderator to have a little bit more energy. A Couple of distractions you might wanna think about. Seems silly, but you may wanna pay attention to your clothing. Bright clothing is a little bit more energizing than dark clothing. Striped shirts can be a little bit distracting. Just looking at this on my screen, it kind of like fools with my eyes. A lot of shiny jewelry might be distracting. So think about that. Fast body movements. This is another one that I'm working really hard on. I try to keep my hands below the screen because I tend to talk with my hands. So I try really hard to keep them below the camera so that you don't see my movements because it can be really distracting. So just to wrap up, if I can leave you with one piece of advice, plan, plan, plan. Be very intentional about these meetings. Don't leave them to chance. It's very important that you really plan them out well. And here's where you also have to test the technology, train yourself, use the technology. Get familiar with it ahead of time. Don't just think you can wing it. And then don't be afraid to actively facilitate. It's very important that you are an active facilitator in these virtual meetings, much more so than maybe you've had to be in your in-person meeting. So with that, I'll, I'll wrap up and I'll ask Anna whether there are any questions, maybe some best practices that people shared um, so we can answer some questions. Uh, Mary, uh, this is Jerry. So we've got a couple that came in, uh, okay. uh, the presenters. Uh, the first one was, uh, what would you, what recommendations would you have for platforms to use? So again, I don't want to, I don't want to endorse any certain platforms. 
Um, I will tell you the one that I am using most with regards to training, because I do a lot of training and I wanna make sure it's very interactive versus a webinar. There are two different purposes to those. Webinars are mostly just to convey information, but when I do training, I use Zoom. It's not the only good training platform out there. It's just the one that I'm most comfortable with. It, I feel it gives me the, um, the easiest access to tools. There are a lot of other ones that a lot of other trainers are using. So I suggest you just kind of do some, um, some research on your own. The, the way I suggest you research it is, think what you wanna do with the platform. So you kind of come up a, with a list of things you need. Do you need breakout rooms? Maybe you don't for what you're doing. Maybe that's not important to you. Do you want a virtual whiteboard? Maybe that's really important to you. So you wanna make sure that that works really well. So a lot of these will allow you to try them for free. That's the way I recommend you, you identify a platform that you wanna use. If you're just doing meetings, some people just some people are using Teams, that kind of thing. That's a little bit different where all you wanna do is a video chat. Maybe you use it on your phone. Maybe you just use Teams, whatever. So again, I think about what you wanna do with it, then examine those that say they have it and play around with it. Most of them will allow you to play around with it for free. Uh, when it comes to attendees at uh, one of these meetings, what, what would you say the optimal number is? And what, what in your opinion, do you on the uh, platform? Yeah, um, you know, I would say you've got to have um, the right people in your virtual room to make the decisions you need to make. So I can't say that there's an optimum number. I've I've worked with small groups of, you know, just two or three of us getting together to solve problems, but I've worked with groups of as many as 25 or 30 to, to conduct good training or good meetings. It's just the way I manage them is different. So, so you may wanna start out small because small is a little bit easier to manage at first, get comfortable with that and then build yourself up to some bigger meetings. But the bigger your meeting becomes, the much more intentional you have to get with regard to that meeting. How many is too many? I've seen people manage webinars with hundreds of people, but it's gotta be a very well-managed webinar and they've got multiple people kind of helping them in the background, manage chat, manage the interactions, they've got everybody muted and they won't let them unmute and they're very intentional about the way they do it. So, so when you've got your audience size lined out, just make sure you're using their, those tools to facilitate well. Another question came in, uh, is the raised hand symbol the only way to avoid people talking over each other? Any other ideas? Uh, there's the raised hand either on your camera or there's sometimes in your application you can virtually raise your hand. Uh, another way to, to manage that is through the chat. So maybe I want everybody to stay on mute while I'm giving a presentation, but just like we did today, I had everybody enter thing and things in chat as we went through it. And then I have an intentional time where I can go through those questions, share any best practices that maybe people shared. So that's another way to manage people's conversation. And maybe let's say Jane entered a question and I get to it at the end and I don't, and I wanna have some dialogue with Jane. So maybe what I'll do is say, hey Jane, that's a great question. Can you give me an example of why you've had that problem so I can give you a better answer? Or maybe I say, hey Jane, I just gave you an answer. Was that good enough or do you need some more details? And maybe then I let her come off of mute to participate with me. So there are a number of ways you can manage that dialogue. Okay, another question came in. How can I re-engage a participant who has lost interest in the meeting? A couple of ways there. One of them is what I shared at the end, just about, okay, everybody, now I'm going to go round robin 
and I'm going to ask everyone their opinion on this topic, or I'm going to ask everyone to tell me some solutions for this topic. Another way to engage people is by using some of those drawing tools or whiteboard tools. So maybe I'm not the only one that's going to take notes on the whiteboard. Maybe when we want to enter information, we allow everybody to enter information on the whiteboard. It can get kind of crazy and kind of messy, but it engages people, which is what you want to have happen. It, it allows people to participate in the meeting. Other ways to engage people is require that they come in to report on certain actions on the agenda um, and make it clear up front that they've got to participate in this meeting as well and that you will be periodically calling on people to make sure that they are participating. And it looks like our uh, final question. Uh, are there other tools besides PowerPoints that I can use to present information? There are other tools besides PowerPoint. These platforms often allow sharing of multiple applications. So PowerPoint has its place in terms of conveying kind of stagnant information. So I put together a PowerPoint and you see what I present. But don't be reluctant to share things like Word, Excel, lots of other apps and, and, um, and other um, tools that we can share that allow more interaction. Again, you might share Excel and start taking notes in your worksheet as a group to work on a worksheet together. Another way to get engagement. Okay, everybody, let's enter some information here that we need. Who, what is our customer list we're going to target? And we just kind of take notes on that Excel sheet. So the beauty of so many of these platforms is it allows you to share your screen or it allows you to share apps, whatever application that might be, to, to work um, together as a group to fill in information, to enter data and all of that. So, so don't be hesitant to use that. And like I say, play around with it ahead of time. You'll be amazed at what you can do in some of these meetings. Well, Mary, that uh, ends the question part of the uh, presentation. Appreciate that. I'd like to thank you for joining us uh, this morning and uh, hope you have a pleasant afternoon. Please remember to check Radiac's website at www.rockford.il.com for business resources and upcoming webinars. Again, have a great afternoon. Thank you.